Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode, I want to handle a particular mission that we've been putting off. If you recall, we have a satellite hanging around Minmus that is derelict. It was supposed to handle two missions. It only got part of one done. This conduct a long-term orbital reconnaissance survey of Minmus. It sent the recon scan data back, but it hasn't done it around the northern hemisphere because it doesn't have enough power. So we need to restore its power so it can do that and also so that it can reposition itself into this synchronous orbit uh, with these parameters and uh, use its, well it doesn't actually need to use the Ima spectral imaging platform and solar particle collector but it has those on it and that's all it needs to do but we'll get some signs from that hopefully. So we want to restore that particular satellite, service it. I don't have the shuttle parts yet. Uh, our research building, we haven't unlocked the ability to get the 500 science technologies, so we need to do that, which means we need to have the funds to do that, which means we should probably handle some of the contracts. So um, a shuttle would be a good thing to have for to service satellites with. That was one of the primary jobs of the vessel uh, of the shuttle in real life. So that is something I'm looking forward to. But for now. What I wanted to do was to create a system that the Kerbals would be in orbit and would be able to stay in orbit for a very long time and be ready at a moment's notice just in case something goes wrong with a satellite. And so we have this. I've called it Voyager because it was originally meant to actually carry probes to other locations like Jewel. And so it's got little docking ports there for probes, but we'll send, we'll do that later. It's got two nuclear engines, Nervas, these kinds of radial Nervas, and a lot of liquid fuel, and uh, mono propellant. And if we do attach probes to it, I'd probably want them to be mono propellant probes, maybe. We'll think about that, because otherwise this can't refuel them. But then again, maybe we'll just have the probes be one off probes. They're simpler that way. We'll see. It doesn't really have a science lab or something like that, but it does have communication. Uh, two big dishes and uh, these little Communitron 16s and yeah the idea is that Kerbals can stay in here for a long time and it, uh, I guess uh, according to what I've been told as long as they have one year of habitation they're good to go indefinitely I think I'm not uh, we'll check that out but I'm only gonna send two Kerbals up and it'll be a pilot and engineer and that's why I've got these two modules to ensure that we have a year of habitation and I've pre-expanded the modules because I didn't want to carry the material kits and the material kits are expensive anyway so it's cheaper just to pre pre uh, expand the modules so that's why it's like that I don't know if I need uh, machinery in them to do anything in particular let's take a look at that but yeah, I mean, uh, carrying material kits is extra mass, which means you have to have a larger launcher, and that adds more expense. So, yeah, it's uh, it's just better to, if you can, fit it on the launcher, pre-expand them. Um, well, the greenhouse function needs 500 machinery. I guess we'll have to pack those in. Uh, that'll be a little bit of an extra expense. Um, 16,000, I think it was, something like that. Okay. It's got RCS, it's got everything, and most importantly, it's got inventory with connector ports, it's got uh, various solar panels to attach, it's got um, battery packs, antennae, so that's doable. Uh, one thing I did forget is we need to make sure that the Kerbals have the right tools, so let's do that. Let's just pack in... Uh, two of those I don't know I'll, I'll put well wrenches uh, they're, they're all actually expensive a hundred dollar not a hundred dollar a hundred fund wrenches 650 fund screwdrivers don't know about all that but we'll put two of these at least I know that they're important and that should be that so now I think we're all set I've decided to use the linebacker boosters, they'll be recovered, and then we have an expendable skipper stage here to give us an extra boost before going on to the nuclear engines. Okay, and Tedrod and Hallery are our crew. 
I will have to recruit more crew, but for now this will do. Okay, here we are. SAS on, throttle up. Tedron and Hallery look good. And... Uh, okay, yep. Here we go. Okay, we should be through the worst of the pressure, the dynamic pressure. Okay, igniting the skipper. Which seems to be waggly. I saw the skipper waggling there. That's not good. Seems like it's closer on this side than on that side, so that's a bit weird. But anyway, it's all right now. It has a lot less delta V than I thought it should have. Let me ignite the uh, nervous now, or maybe that's not such a good idea. All right, well. Okay, well, this is going off to a great start. Fortunately, we've got 3,200 meters per second here. I thought we had more. And, uh, in the VAB, I thought it said we had more, but apparently not. What does it say about our situation here? Um, well, it says have and home for 59 days here now. Um, uh, maybe if we start habitat, okay, and we can start habitat there. Okay, now it's, now it's indefinite for Tedrod, but not indefinite for Hallery. So I guess it's all, it's a year for the pilots, but not a year for the engineers? Really? Huh. Well, that's just not helpful, is it? I don't suppose you could be a habitat. We have started agroponics there. We are going down. Let's pitch up a little bit more here. We can't really get the sense of agroponics here. Ooh, hab for the guys on Min on Minmus itself is diminishing. They've only got three days left. Can I just have them like walk out on the job, honestly? I I know there's an option like that, but So yeah, pilots pilots are good. Pilots they they don't need much habitation. As long as they've got a cockpit and a year's worth of habitation, they're good indefinitely. But not the engineers, huh? Uh, we may encounter the atmosphere again. Okay, well, not exactly the orbit I was looking for. We'll have to get up to Apoapsis and fix this, but at least they are temporarily safe. Let's see about Minmus. Maybe we can burn to Minmus before actually making orbit. Um, well, we can, we can assume that kind of plot. We'll be headed back down at that point, but maybe it'll work out. Okay, we probably should have started going already, so let's go. Uh, okay, that's a good enough start. I'll take it. Our target is... Where? Not the Minmus Cycler. It's the Minmus Spy Sat. Which is actually in a predetermined orbit. Though it needs to be put into that orbit later on. 
So that's what we're trying to get to. Um, from this approach, it should be straightforward enough to correct this orbit to encounter it. Uh, we'll have to do some inclination change, but that's, that's going to be fine from out here. Alright. On we go. Let us depart. And I wish I had put more lights on this thing. But that's a pretty good view right there. You can see our Duna missions head out. I hope I didn't forget something with the Duna missions. Uh, the problem with having any sort of gap between uh, doing stuff in the series one day and then the next time I do it is that I may forget things. But anyway, this seemed like the most important thing to take care of at this moment, so I went with it. Let's check our recoveries. Um, we lost the skipper, that's expected, and the stack decoupler. Um, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, we've, we've done the Duna transfer point, it's fine. Uh, we did recover the linebacker booster. So, that's good. And, alright, excellent. Still, this was an expensive mission. Actually, not as expensive as potentially relaunching the spy satellite because the scientific instruments are so expensive. Okay, let me finagle some sort of rendezvous with our target. Okay, I have the plot here and we will have a rendezvous right there at a separation of 0.6 kilometers. But I'm a little bit late for this first maneuver, which is to correct our inclination from going this away to going up that away. Quite a big change. But we have the delta V for it. And this this whole uh, sequence will take about 220 meters per second. Well, that's a pretty close encounter right there, and we do have an apoapsis with that. Very important to check both an apoapsis and a periapsis when trying to make orbit. Okay, looks good. Okay, we have our closest approach distance going down. No, oh, it's going up again. It looks like uh, three kilometers, which is much more than I thought it would be, but okay. We will take that for now. It's right around there. Right place, wrong number. Well, our people on Minmus have all turned into tourists. Well, their habitability has expired according to this. So, we're probably going to have to land another HAB module nearby so that that gets bumped up so that we can EVA them and sort of extract them, bring them back. I think that's probably the best idea. Okay, we are now within 100 meters and closing. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Alright, point me to the target, please. Okay, well, that's a pretty close approach of the satellite. Close approach distance is obviously lying because we are currently closer. So, let's uh, just stabilize here. She's okay, don't use RCS for that, please. I've been using way... well... My systems have been using way more RCS than I'd like. There we go. 20 millimeters per second is fine by me. Let's just hold it there. Okay. Uh, Hallery. And Hallery should have inventory. Yes. Let's equip. Go. RCS on. Get to the back where the inventory is. Okay, uh, let's have these three by two solar panels and two batteries. 
Maybe I should put the bigger ones. I think I think the small ones will do though. We did have an appropriate place for the solar panels. Uh, H to attach. Not be, gonna be quite as properly snapped as they ought to have been, but one battery. Oh, it's got batteries though. Well, uh, no harm putting extra. Also, its batteries have probably been depleted, so we won't be able to control it if we... Uh, we won't be able to open the solar panel. Well, I guess he could. He could probably open the solar panels. But better this way, anyway. Alright, let's go with that. Back to the ship. Okay, good. Alright, successful EVA, I think. Let's check. Extend solar panel. It might bump into that instrument. Extend solar panel. Delta V-wise, it should be good enough to get into the necessary orbit around Minmus. Let's have the ship back away. And we'll get into a higher orbit now. We're pretty close to periapsis. Um, I'd rather be close to apoapsis when going to a higher orbit, but... Okay. Let's do what we need to do with this now. Looks good. Let's start multi-spectral scan while we're here. Well, uh, let's hold off until we get into that other orbit, since it seems to be not biome-dependent. Let's see. Log visual observations, is that biome-dependent? Midlands, yeah. Let's transmit that. Looking good. Southern Hemisphere. We've already done that. We need Northern Hemisphere. We'll get there eventually. Solar particles will wait. Uh, we could have actually had uh, somebody take the science from the mystery goo container. Um, we'll, we'll just transmit it for now, I guess. We'll do something else to recover it. Okay. Now, recon scan of the northern hemisphere. All right, 56 science. Done. Okay, excellent. Now, next thing, we need to reposition to this orbit, which is the one that's indicated out here. It says, have a D-Magic multi-spectral imaging platform on the satellite, but it doesn't have that checked. But I do. I do have a D-Magic multi-spectral imaging platform. That's what this is. Is it not going to be able to fill that one? Oh, but this is a ScanSat multispectral sensor. Uh oh. This might not be the right multispectral. How many multispectral things do we have? Oh, shucks. So. Okay, let's check in the VAB. This might not be the right multispectral imaging thing. Oh, okay. Well, then this is the right multispectral imaging platform. Great. Okay, well, I guess what we need to do is have a way to resupply our Voyager, right? That's going to eventually have to happen. We don't need nuclear engines. What we really want is this container. That's really what we need. And it'll have parts, though in this case not, not all these. 
Well, we needed uh, two of those panels for future missions. And two batteries would be good. But can we fit the multi-spectral imaging thing in here? Good. That's very important. So then we'll have to bring the Voyager back. Or we could send this all the way out to Minmus to... But, you know, that's... But, of course, we still have to attach it to the probe. We shouldn't have pulled Voyager... Well, maybe we should have Voyager come back, or should we send this all the way out to Minmus? Probably it'd be easier to send it all the way out to Minmus, huh? Not not this whole thing, obviously. I'm going to reroute to that container. Yeah, and get all that off. We've still got Commutron 16s here, so that's good. And we don't really need the docking port, particularly. Uh, though, what if we want to refuel? Hmm. But I didn't like how this was sort of unbalanced. So we'll have it like that. And we'll have the docking port up front. It makes sense to have mod propellant engines on this since we're not carrying... We want to replenish the liquid fuel on the... Uh, eventually this will be able to replenish all the liquid fuel, though maybe we could carry some less. Anyway, let me build this and then tell you what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so here is our resupply vessel. Um, that part. And it's got two Nervas. And I discovered that the Nervas have better heat tolerance than the alternative, which is the Terrier engines. Terrier has 2000 Kelvin. The nuclear engines, these Nervas, have 2500. So I decided to go with them because I'm going to try and bring it back through the atmosphere and we're not going to have a heat shield. Um, I'm not too sure how well that's going to work out. It won't be, I, I think we've got a retro burn close to en uh, entry into the Kerbin atmosphere so that we won't be like bearing the brunt of the entire Minmus return heating because that's pretty tough. But yeah, so this is a liquid fuel tank and of course this is the tank to refuel the Voyager and we're not, we don't have it full because Voyager still has some fuel left. We've got mob propellant to help with docking and also to refuel. Probably we don't need to carry so much. Maybe on this trip we'll only carry half. That seems fair. We've got RCS ports. We have the Commutron 16s, which, uh, you know, we're on that originally anyway. Parachutes, we're not going to try and do a propulsive landing. We're just going to use the parachutes. The nose cone will go away. And in the container, we have the multi-spectral imaging platform that we needed. So we'll send that over. And the second stage here is a skipper stage, that is... Uh, we're, we're not going to recover that, but we will recover the linebacker. A single linebacker is what we will use for our first stage. So that is the plan. I don't know how it's going to work. Um, I was really trying to use the Terriers originally because I didn't want to have it cost so much. Of course, the nuclear engines cost way more than the Terriers. They're 14500 apiece. The only reason it's a good idea in this case is A, we're resupplying with liquid fuel and so if for some reason we run out here we have this extra to use and if for some reason we are carrying too much of this we can use it for these nervous anyway. But um, yeah, because we're recovering it, it makes sense to use the nuclear engines instead of the terriers but only if this is recoverable. Alright, so here we go, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Off we go. Just a big solid rocket booster, which happens to have gimbling, thank goodness. And, uh, and a skipper stage. Uh, there might be a little bit of a issue on the skipper stage being... Uh, I forgot, this, this runs out pretty darn quickly. Let me keep it at this pitch. And we'll stage a skipper at the same time. Yeah, you can see we're losing velocity. 
it shouldn't be a problem. But it's not gonna be ideal. We're picking up now. But still, 0.8 G's of acceleration here. Okay, looking pretty good now. Looks exactly what I wanted. Uh, stage will probably run out just shy of orbit. And then we can finish up orbit with the Nervas. The linebacker is recovered. Oh, we got an extra little bit for performing the spacewalk in orbit of Minmus. Indeed, it was a spacewalk. A very good spacewalk, indeed. And we've got some science, too. Let's extend some, in some antennae. Okay, and this will re-enter. I don't know why it always wants me to double decouple, but off it goes. And we can dump the nose cone as well. Alright. Okay, I think we are all sorted out. So now, uh, let me see if I can plot directly for Minmus uh, before making orbit. Otherwise I'll make orbit and I'll, uh, I'll meet you over at the Minmus side. Okay, well actually this is an interesting enough sort of transfer burn to make note of. Um, we're actually getting the moon's help in order to change our inclination here. You can see we're heading out in this inclination and then the moon actually increases our inclination to hit Minmus over there. Uh, you can see there's no way with our current orbit that we would be able to mit, uh, hit Minmus over there. The downside is it takes a little bit longer. Um, we're going to take 16 days to get our Minmus periapsis. We actually hit the moon again over here which uh, means this is actually sort of a cycler sort of thing, but sort of. Anyway, but it, it only takes 858 meters per second to get out to Minmus, so that's good. Our moon periapsis is safe, 438 kilometers, so that's good too. This is probably a bit touchy and needs to be precise, which means I'm probably going to have to fix it a lot by the time we get done with the burn. But anyway, that is the plan. Alright, we've entered Minmus SOI as planned, but our approach is like nowhere near what we need to match up with the Voyager. So yeah, I think we'll get into a loose orbit first, rather than making this weird correction. And then at this loose orbit here, we can also do a plane change maneuver to make things a little bit better. Now, of course, we've got the locked fuel, and this will all be a lot lighter once we transfer the necessary fuel into the Voyager. Okay, relative inclination is pretty much exact, so that's a good start. Now let's get to our periapsis and drop the apoapsis and try and time things. Oh, it's a four-day orbit. Hmm. No, I don't want to hang out that long. Can we just go orbit retrograde? Can't shorten it up too much, but maybe a little. Oh, that's pretty tight. Uh, <laughs> hmm. And while Mechjeb says five kilometers, not seeing where that actually is. Oh, and it's reducing the closest approach distance somehow. Okay. Oh, right there, I guess. Well, that's four. Oh, there. Okay, good. Let's just hope there's no mountain in the way. We're at eight kilometers now on the periapsis. I'm not entirely sure I like these RCS sounds. Don't they sound a little bit better normally? 
This sounds like some really bad space shooter game sound effects or something. Yeah, don't know what that's about. Blatantly using a lot of mop repellent at this point. We're carrying quite a lot. More than we need to resupply the Voyager with. And magnetism. Alright. Now, most important thing, the whole reason we came out here. Make sure to get the multi-spectral thingamajig. Let's put that in that slot, just to keep things organized. Okay. So that's done. And let's top off the fuel. I think we got just the right amount here. Yep, uh, only uh, 15 extra there, which we can pump into the top bit. Actually, you know what? At this point, we can pump it into the bottom bits to help with re-entry and all. Because that'll be better for balance. And we'll unlock that. Okay, and then the mob propellant containers. Okay, I think that does it. So the job of this little transfer vehicle is done. Completely successful, as far as I can see. No inventory in there, yep. Okay, let's back away. It's got 1,024 meters per second left, which should be enough to transfer back to Kerbin and then slow down a bit before re-entering so that we don't have full Minmus return velocity. But let's focus on this bit. Let's get the job done. So I'll plot rendezvous again with the same satellite and we'll try and get that multi-spectral imaging platform attached. Okay, rendezvous just took one orbit and uh, we are now within render range of the target but we're gonna have to try and get closer. No obvious issues. We're building up quite a lot of supplies in the Nomomatic. Fertilizer is being consumed though. I wonder what planetary warehouse does compared to local warehouse. Seems like planetary warehouse would be for a station though, but still, not entirely sure how that fits into the grand logistical scheme of things. Okay, that should be pretty good. Alright, Hallery again. EVA please. Inventory, equip. Up, 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 up. <gasps> Oops. Ah, oh, I must be getting tired. Okay, well, that's not good. I, I don't suppose there's like a repair function, is there? Probably there's something to do that. Dang it, bumped into the solar panel. Um, here, can you get close to that? Don't disassemble that. Uh, this nub, I don't know what perform maintenance does. Perform maintenance, perform routine maintenance, okay. Well, still, that's not what we needed there. Guess we can't uh, repair parts. Inventory, and inventory. <sighs> Gotta be careful with these Kerbals. Okay, he's carrying the multi-spectral imaging platform. We will deduct the cost of the solar panel from his um, pay, you know. That's only natural. But I, I think he's getting a bonus for all of the stuff he's doing anyway. Okay, got it on on the fly. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Why? He didn't actually knock anything. 
Okay, well, this is a dangerous sort of situation. Uh, can you grab? Alright, good. Oh, no, the grab didn't work. There we go. Board. Alright. Well, that job is done. Let's get control over this again. And let's uh, finally... Okay, it, it's got all the things now, right, contract? Yes, it does. So now we have to get to that location. Let's do that. Let me plot for that. Okay. That is our first burn. We're going to have to do two burns. One to establish a new apoapsis and then the other to change our inclination and establish a new periapsis. But he... Uh, time off for eight minutes. I guess we should do the multi-spectral imaging platform right here. Just a little bit of data. Let me make sure we're going to be going the right way. So we seem to be coming around this way. We want it to be going that away. So once we get here, we need to pull our orbit like this. I think. Hope I've got that right. Well, it should be better to do this particular burn immediately rather than waiting. That looks pretty close right there. Yeah, that looks pretty close. What do you think? We need to maintain stability for 10 seconds. Wait, it doesn't count this as a new unmanned probe that has an antenna and can generate power? But... Man... It was new when, when we launched it, when we got this contract. It wasn't up yet. But it doesn't count this. Shoot. Well, see, I need to pay attention to these things that aren't checked more often. I guess it, when we launched it, it didn't have the ability to generate power, so it didn't check that off. Now it has the ability to generate power, though. These contracts and their definition of new. Anyway, let's do some science. Well, apparently that one's already done. Transmit. Let's do this solar particle collector thing. We could probably refuel this and send it off to somewhere else. We can use the pipe endpoints to refuel it. Oh, the, the recon... Apparently we can't uh, use the recon for science. That's not right. Okay, well it does have some fuel left if you want to transfer it to somewhere else. I'll leave this be and let's try and recover that refueler vessel. Okay, well we got a moon slingshot on the way out. It looks like we're going to get one on the way back. This is interesting. It's going to slow us down a bit. And so that'll help. Well, let's try and... I, I wanted to get out of Minmus SOI first so I could plot things properly because we were in a polar orbit around Minmus. It was a little bit cumbersome. Okay. So, let's do this node. Okay, and that leaves us with uh, 758 meters per second to slow down over there. So, nine days. I know I'm leaving these Kerbals uh, in tourist mode, but we'll deal with that in the next episode, where we're going to resupply them as well, and give them a new habitat of some kind, I think. I'll try and figure out what to do about that. Clearly, the Planetary Base Inc. habitats aren't as good as the coloniz colonization habitats where here we uh, th they're all sort of packed in to the same little module but our pilots have it indefinite and our uh, Georgie and Bill our engineers are quite all right of course they have the inflatable modules there as well anyway passing by the moon once again we really don't need the solar panels out at this point 
probably helpful not to have those. I'll leave two antennae out and just expect them to get broken. I'm gonna increase... Uh, maybe I shouldn't. I guess maybe that the default minimum pressure will be alright, we'll see. Um, and I want to arm them because I might not have communication otherwise. Oh, I forgot to put uh, all y'all in here. I should do that. I did put it into my new series, so uh, that's the Galileo Planet Pack one. So now, three different solar systems for me to juggle. Kerbin, Galileo, Gale, and uh, real solar system. Okay, we're about to hit the atmosphere. Let's slow down as much as we can. getting hot already. Okay, just keep slowing down then. Uh-oh, things are heating up. I wanted a... Well, this might not be a good idea right now. Well, we have no communication. We're in plasma blackout. The RCS ports seem to be overheating. I think... or... well, things are overheating. Things are overheating. We'll see what blows up. As long as the engines don't. That'll be good. Okay, what were those? Those were the RCS ports. Okay, we'll have to review where we put those. I don't like the tank glowing. Okay, well, the uh, indicators are gone now. But I don't know if we're going to slow down in time for the parachutes. Let's see, surface. Okay, we actually have communication now, which is nice. Uh, put S uh, Smart ASS off. Just let that. Oh, we have pre-deployment, and it looks okay. It's pretty fast. That's supersonic, but I guess it's allowed. I would not have pop them there, but we'll have to make sure to, in the VAB, uh, increase the minimum pressure. And 4.5 meters per second. So that's pretty good too. Okay, avoiding some trees. And it's down. Let's recover. So to recap, we did not succeed in fulfilling the contracts we meant to fulfill by repairing that satellite and putting the additional instrument on it. But we uh, did get some signs from returning a vessel from orbit around Minmus. We recovered what we meant to recover from the from the refueling vessel, resupply vessel, and our new vessels did work out, our new craft did what they were supposed to do, and no sudden disasters there. We've got plenty of science. Uh, how much does it take to upgrade the R&D building? Well, 1.69 million. Um, I'll hold off on that until we actually fulfill um, this orbital survey of Duna and Ike. Uh, let's see if there's a Jewel one. We've already got missions over to Jewel. Doesn't seem like it. They're not interested in Jewel at all. Okay, well, anyway, I'll, I'll leave further decisions for later. I think we've done enough in this episode, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.